What's up guys, it's Marius from Audio Judgment and today I'll try to explain how does a base reflex enclosure work. I see numerous explanations on how these enclosures function. Some are easier to digest than others, but now I'm going to explain it my way. So what do I mean by my way? I like to simplify things and only use information that people can understand or relate. And since this is related to audio, I'm sure there will be that guy who will comment using excessive technical language, what have I missed out and how my explanation is unsatisfactory. On the other side, the vast majority will be happy for actually learning something new. So let's begin. Before we get to the base reflex enclosure, we first have to visit the sealed enclosure. And before that, we have to see what happens when there is no enclosure at all. The speaker oscillates from its resting position. As a result, it will move forwards as much as it will go backwards. When the speaker moves forward, it creates positive pressure in the front of the cone and negative pressure in the back of the cone. And when the cone moves backward, it creates positive pressure in the back and negative in the front. And this trend continues. The speaker produces sound in front of the cone and the same sound in the back of the cone. If you plot this down, the sound will look like a sine wave. However, if you plot the sound from the back of the cone, it has a different start and the sine wave is slightly offset. This creates a problem because if the two sounds meet, they cancel each other out. You can think about it this way. A speaker produces the sound X in front of the cone and the same sound X on the back. Only that the front is positive and the back sound is negative. If you add them up, you get zero. So let's test this out. Grab a speaker by its magnet and uh, play some music. From this theory here, uh, there should be no sound coming out of the speaker. However, we do hear sound. Why is that? First of all, what we hear is mostly high and mid frequencies and the bass is almost absent. Secondly, I want to point out that there are several reasons why this happens, but I will explain the most important factor. Music is composed by many frequencies, and each frequency has its own wavelength. So, lower frequencies have longer wavelengths. Since we hear from 20 Hz to 20 kHz, here are some examples. So, 20 Hz has uh, 17.15 meters, 100 Hz 3.43 meters, 1500 Hz 0 0.29 meters or 29 centimeters and 12000 Hz has 3 centimeters. As we can see, as we get higher and higher in the frequency spectrum, the wavelength gets to merely centimeters. Disregarding the fact that uh, higher frequencies are more directive and don't particularly care about going around the speaker, but rather in the front, only the lower frequencies have large enough wavelengths to travel from the front to the back of the speaker. So depending on how large the speaker driver is, the bass cancellation is reduced as, as there is larger distance to travel from the front to the back. In this case, if we put the speaker on a baffle, we improve the bass response as less frequencies cancel each other and only the low frequencies suffer from this effect. If we extrapolate, if you place a speaker on an infinite baffle, none of the frequencies are cancelled and you got one awesome enclosure. Problem is that an infinite panel is kind of awkward and maybe imaginary. Although if we want to avoid this cancellation only down to 20 Hz, the panel can be just uh, 17 meters by 17 meters which is still kind of awkward. Since walking around with a 17 square meter panel is not cool, uh, that's when a sealed box come into play. If we place the speaker in a sealed enclosure, 
the back waves are trapped inside the box and we basically separated the front waves from the back waves. Of course, placing the speaker in a box uh, with limited volumes has other effects on the speaker sound, but we are not here to discuss the effects of a sealed box, but rather how does a bass reflex enclosure work. So let's take the sealed box and slap a cylindrical pipe to it. There you have it, a bass reflex. And if you paid any attention to this video, you are going to quickly object. By placing the pipe over there, doesn't that mean that the back waves will have a way to travel to the front and achieve cancellation? Well, your observation is correct, but I will tell you why that doesn't happen in just a second. Well, at least partially doesn't happen. By introducing that pipe over there, we just added an element which resonates. The air inside the pipe has a certain mass and the air inside the box has a certain elasticity or compliance. By altering the size of the box and the dimensions of the pipe, we can modify the resonant frequency of the port. Now I'm going to give some random numbers and grossly oversimplify what happens, but you will get the idea. Let's say that the resonant frequency of the port is 50 Hz. When the speaker reaches 50 Hz, the air inside the port will start to vibrate violently and this rapid movement simulates a second speaker. The sound generated from the port adds up with the sound of the speaker. This effect happens to the frequencies in the vicinity of 50 Hz, although at a different level. So, maximum output at uh, 50 Hz, and then progressively lower at 49, 48, 47, etc. And respectively 51, 52, 53, etc. Regarding the other frequencies, anything above what happens in the 50 Hz region cannot escape through the port because the mass of air inside the pipe is too great to respond to the speaker movement. So it virtually simulates a perfectly sealed box. Anything below the 50 Hz region, those frequencies pass through the port unrestricted and will achieve cancellation with the front waves. That's why when you compare the frequency response chart of a sealed box and a bass reflex box, the ported one has a steeper roll-off because below the resonant frequency of the box, cancellation occurs and the response gets worse rapidly. For the sealed box, the roll-off is smoother as the back waves don't meet with the front waves at all. When it comes to the resonant frequencies, two factors changes things. The volume of air inside the box, bigger box lowers the resonant frequency while a smaller box will yield a higher resonant frequency, when it comes to cylindrical ports, a larger diameter will increase the resonant frequency. But to keep the resonant frequency the same, you will have to make the port longer. In an ideal case, a port will have the same diameter as the speaker. But that diameter is so large that the lengths need to be ridiculous to reach the desired resonant frequency. So when it comes to the diameter, go for air as large as possible until the length becomes unreasonable. A large port will make sure that you won't have any chuffing. When playing music at high volumes, if the port is undersized, it may present unwanted noises made by the air turbulence. A bass reflex can be tuned below the resonant frequency of the driver to extend the playable frequency range, but this will demand a larger box, you can also tune it higher than the resonant frequency of the driver. This will result in a larger or smaller peak in the upper bass region, depending on how you design it. Also, in this case, the box volume requirements are smaller. We can go on and on about this bass reflex enclosure, but I guess these are the ground principles on how a bass reflex enclosure works. I'm sure many of you now understand what are the basics behind a ported box. So, in the end, don't forget to thumbs up the video if you liked it, and of course subscribe if you want to see more. Hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!